Thank you once again for joining us today, this Tuesday morning. It's been an amazing journey having a discussion with us regarding the book of John. Yesterday we started on the seven I am's and we looked at the bread of life where Jesus says in John chapter 6 verse 35 that I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. And yesterday we looked at some critical uh, perspectives on how Jesus satisfies our deepest spiritual hunger. Therefore, I want to uh, request that if you haven't gotten uh, a wind of what we've been discussing, just go on our YouTube page or a Facebook page and get the entire package so that you may be able to be uh, in sync with what we have been discussing. So today we will discuss the second I am statement that Jesus makes that is in the book of John chapter number 8. But first of all, let's trust God uh, in prayer. Father, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your protection throughout the night that we are able to see a new day today. Lord, we thank you because your mercies are new this day. Therefore, we commit ourselves to you, King of glory, and we ask, speak to us, dear Father. Your servants are listening. This we pray in Jesus' name. Chapter 8 of the book of John contains the second I am statement that Jesus makes. Remember, these are audacious statements that confirms who Jesus is, as captured by John and not captured by the other synoptic gospels. But today, let's uh, interrogate Father when he's talking in uh, chapter 8. Uh, I'll pick it up from verse 1. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down uh, and taught them. Remember Jesus was not just uh, uh, gathering crowds just to be one of these celebrities that was in town. No, 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 no. At any given gathering, Jesus was quite intentional in what to do with the gathering. Every multitude that came to him, Jesus was categorical on the intention. He was quite intentional as to what he wanted to deliver into their understanding. So to some, he, he taught them. Uh, he gave them serious teachings. And people grow by teachings. People grow by teaching. When you learn and become an studious student of the word of God, you get to learn so much that can carry you through every different variations of life. And so he taught them. Uh, verse 3 says, Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set uh, her in the midst, uh, they said to him, Teacher, this woman... Uh, was caught in adultery in the very act, in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us to, that, such, that such should be stoned. But what do you say? Verse 6, this they said, testing him. You never test Jesus. <laughs> you never test Jesus. He, uh, do not test your, the Lord your God. And now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But this, uh, but what do you say? Verse 6 says, this they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus took down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they had continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then, he, then those who heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went one by one, beginning with the oldest even to the last. And Jesus was left, left alone uh, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Verse 12 is critical. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, 
I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. But have the light of life. Life is lived through or to the degree to which you access the light that one shines on your path to give you direction. The word of the Lord is a lamp to our feet. That means the word shines forth. And once it shines forth, it illuminates the path for you to walk in. Therefore, when Jesus uses this analogy that I am the light of the world, what he means that is that he illuminates the dark, the, he illuminates in a dark world. He illuminates in a dark world. In other words, he shines. In the book of John chapter 1, we cannot talk about light without going to the book of John chapter 1 and then also without going to the book of beginnings. Look at this uh, discourse. In the beginning was the word, John chapter 1, and the word was God with, uh, was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life. Capture that. Remember, he is the bread of life. That means whatever he gives you creates, if there was any dying uh, situation in your life and he gives you this bread, you come alive. It's like your deepest spiritual hunger kicks in to reality, to, to, to being alive again. But in this sense now he says, in him was life and then that life was the light of men. That means without life, without this what that we are calling life, what, what we have described to be life in different uh, uh, context. Many people can say this person has seen the better days, he's seen life, he's handled life. Most of the time, we make that statement in relation to the experiences that one has gone through. So we describe life based on the experiences that one, one goes through, which is not fair enough. It is fair enough because logically that would make sense. But then, when it comes to the aspect of creation, before God made anything that he made, first of all, he said, let there be light. Let there be light. This statement alone is the kind of statement that you would want to prosecute in depth to understand why Jesus is saying, I cannot work without light. That is a paraphrase. I cannot work, I cannot go about creation without the manifestation of light. Remember, in the absence of light, the earth was formless, it was void and empty. Darkness filled the whole of the earth. But then, there is also another statement that I want you to consider very, very carefully. If anything, never, never forget this particular scripture. This is one of the scriptures that will carry you through any crisis. It will carry you through any crisis. That scripture is in Isaiah chapter number 60. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says this, Arise, shine, come out of every defeat that life has placed you in. Arise, shine, and then he says this, For your light has come your illumination has already brightened your path. And then he says, what is this light that shines because you're rising? That the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. And then verse 2 is critical also to capture. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. In short, even the people are dimmed or doomed to be walking in darkness when the light of Jesus Christ is not shining in their lives. What do I mean this light? And then he says this, uh, for behold, darkness uh, shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. But then he says, but the Lord will arise over you. When you see the Lord in the Old Testament, capital L, it is typifying Christ. But Jesus will arise over you and then his glory will be seen upon you. In short, what you're supposed 
supposed to be shining forth, what you're supposed to be radiating is the light of Jesus. Remember, he is the one who has called us out of darkness, but then he has called us into marvelous light. Realize that when it has to do with light, it is the um, illumination that eliminates, eliminates ignorance. Ignorance is darkness. Ignorance is darkness. Traditions of men is darkness. Backwardness in culture is darkness. Anything that you have formed that has already created a certain formation that holds you stagnated and holds you in backwardness, that is what you will refer herein as darkness. But then, for you to come out of that, you have got to embrace the light, the brilliance of Jesus Christ that shines forth, one, in the faculties of sight. In the faculties of sight. What are these faculties of sight? Number one, your mind. When the word shines through your mind, it means it is illuminating a certain radiation of light that causes you to think constructively. Remember, it is your mind that forms the thoughts, and these thoughts forms your life. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. So you have, if you have got a wrong mind, we call it mindset, it makes you walk in darkness consistently. And this darkness now is what covers the people, mindsets. That is one faculty of sight, seeing life through your mind. Remember, as a man thinks, as a man thinks, if you are thinking retrogressively, you are right because you will go backwards. If you are thinking progressively, progressively, you are right. You will progress beyond. If you are thinking stagnationally, you will indefinitely stagnate. If you are thinking along traditional mindsets, you will maintain the traditions of men that makes the word of God of no effect faculty of sight, the inability to see with your mind correctly, all right? The second one is your spiritual eye, your ability to see with your spiritual eye. This physical eye is just optical seeing. It is for optical, it's just the optical perspective of seeing. In fact, the Bible there says that if the eye is faulty, the darkness that will be in the body, being that the eye being the, 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 the lamp of the body, if what you are now going to call light is darkness, how much more is darkness in the, how much, how much darkness is in the man based on the faulty eyesight? So spiritual eyes, mind sight, then your optical eye, then the fourth one, which is very, very critical, is your understanding. The Bible says that the eye of your understanding being enlightened, that means once your understanding is enlightened, you are able to see, you are able to see. And then the, the fifth one is the light and the mind or the, or the sight through which you see with wisdom. Remember, Proverbs 24, says that wisdom, uh, it's by wisdom that a house is built. It's by wisdom that a house is built. So if you have got no wisdom, you have got no building. You have got no destiny, you have got no vision, you have got nothing, there is no drive. In fact, the sixth uh, faculty of sight is vision, your ability to see destiny. So we've got about six of them. But then, let's come back to understanding. Uh, and wisdom, and then and knowledge, which is the seventh one. It says, it's by wisdom that a house is built. If you lack the requisite wisdom, you cannot build a life. You are actually predisposed to failure because wisdom is that which builds. And then it is through understanding that it is established. That means if you have got to have a stable life, you have got to have superior understanding on how things work about life. And then thirdly, it is through knowledge that the rooms are filled. Therefore, if there are, there's a specific lack in your life, don't blame the absence of the thing. Blame the absence of the knowledge that will bring the things into perspective. 
And therefore, if you lack these seven faculties of sight, mind, uh, spiritual uh, sight, your own physical seeing, uh, wisdom, vision, and knowledge, as soon as you lack those things, your life is already fried. And that is why Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I shine forth your path through wisdom. I shine forth your path through understanding. I shine forth your path through knowledge. Remember, Isaiah 33, 6 makes this assertion, critical information that he gives us about stability of life. He says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. That means if your life is unstable, if your life is unstable, common sense will tell you wisdom is, uh, is missing, knowledge is missing, understanding is missing. That means you're grappling and walking in darkness simply because you have never embraced these attributes that makes light shine forth. We have revelation which is uh, synonymous with wisdom. Where there is no revelation, where there is no vision, people cast off restraint, people perish. And therefore, if this faculty of sight, this faculty of sight that shines forth your path is missing, you are doomed to fail. In fact, you are predictably going to fail. Therefore, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I illuminate in a dark world. I illuminate in a dark world. Embrace the perspective of Jesus that you may see things from the perspective of Jesus. In fact, realize this. Every time Jesus met a blind man, he was very, very intentional and decisive on opening their eyes. When he was dealing with blindness, he knew, he knew if I don't deal decisively with this blindness, this guy is done. And therefore, blindness therefore becomes the source of darkness. Spiritual blindness is no excuse. Ignorance is blindness, no excuse. No excuse. No excuse. Foolishness is darkness, no excuse. And you cannot substitute for this for anything else. You cannot use any substitutionary component that will eliminate light to try call it uh, uh, to try what to call light what you, what is actually darkness, and therefore embrace the light of Jesus Christ. He says, "I am the light of the world. I illuminate in darkness." I believe God is speaking you to speaking to you some serious serious wisdom today. And when you access this particular wisdom, do something about it. Hold the mirror for yourself. The question is, what do you see? What do you see? My prayer today is that God will lift you to a superior level of understanding. The eye of your understanding, the eye of your understanding will be enlightened so that you can see beyond the horizons of defeat. You can see beyond the horizons of obstacles and things that are blocking your progress and visibility. This is the center for transformation. Have a blessed day today. See you tomorrow for the third installation of the third I am. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. God bless you. <laughs>